Greetings, motherfuckers. My name is Sam, and today is one of those days that starts with daytime, isn't it? I mean, uh, it, um, I should really write these intros down, shouldn't I? Hang on. Okay, there we go. You're here now, sat down or stood up, watching a video about Turkey. It's got cool looking food, cool looking architecture, and a lot of cool looking people. Looking at you, stock footage man, checking out his watch. I see ya. But what is the longest word in the Turkish language, and can I say it? What is the controversy behind this? And remember when we did 101 Facts About Barack Obama? Well, we just found this joke thumbnail we made for it. There's not really a question there, the editors just really want to show it again. Those two questions are going to be answered and that statement is just going to sit there. So let's get all the jokes about Turkey being an animal out of the way very early indeed as we go through 101 Facts About Turkey. Number 1. Turkey, or Turkey Avis, is a species of large bird from the Meligris genus. Uh, wait, not that turkey? <laughs> okay, um, yes, the Republic of Turkey. Turkey is a transcontinental country found overlapping southeastern Europe and western Asia. Number 2. In case you were wondering, by the way, back to that, you know, former point, the name Turkey was actually from the country first and given to the bird later. Turkeys were imported to Europe via the Ottoman Empire and called turkey cocks, which was eventually shortened to just turkey. Number 3. If you think that's confusing, the Turkish word for the bird turkey is Hindi, which literally means Indian. Confusing? Hell yes, but hey, let's get to talking about the country and not the gobbling bird. Number 4. Turkey borders loads of other places, so here we go. On the Europe side, Turkey borders Greece and Bulgaria. To the north is the Black Sea, the Aegean Sea to the west, the Mediterranean Sea to the south, and then on the Asia side it borders Iraq, Iran, Syria, Azerbaijan, Armenia and Georgia. Number 5. That's a lot of coastline, right? It's 1,175 kilometers to be exact, which is the equivalent of almost 13,000 football fields, or 642,497 of me laying across the coast. 101 Facts, bringing you ridiculous measurements since 2015. Number 6. Turkey's capital city is Ankara, despite being the second most populous city in the country following Istanbul, with 5.6 million and 15 million residents respectively. Number 7. The official language of Turkey is Turkish. Huge surprise, is it really? Number 8. But it does have more than 30 minority languages, including Kurdish and Arabic, and English is often spoken in some of the more touristy parts of the country. Number 9. Speaking of languages, the longest word in the Turkish language is... Why? Why do I do this? Muvavaki et shishli... I think it's just easier for you to look at it, isn't it? Which clocks in at 70 letters and means as though you are those from whom we may not be able to easily make into a maker of unsuccessful ones. That doesn't even make sense either. Number 10. How is a 70 letter word possible, you might be asking, because I know I am after attempting to pronounce it. Well, Turkish is an agglutinative language, meaning they can string together several suffixes and prefixes on words to mash them together and make a kind of super word. Number 11. Turkey has a population of around 84 million people, and as of 2019, 89.5% of Turkish citizens identify as being part of the Islamic faith. Previously, Turkey was considered to be 99.8% Muslim population, despite being a secular country. Number 12. The population is also relatively young, with 22.8% being under 14, and an average age of 31. Don't expect to see many bus passes in Turkey either, because only 9% of the population is over 60. Number 13. Let's talk about vexillology, also known as flags, or in this case, flag. Turkey's flag features a white star and crescent moon on a red background. This has been the national flag since 1844, when Turkey was still the Ottoman Empire. But don't worry, we're getting to that bit. Number 14. There are loads of myths surrounding the flag's design, with many presuming that the crescent and star are symbolic of Islam, which they are, but the symbols actually predate the rise of Islam, with suggested origins coming from the Roman moon goddess Diana and the Virgin Mary. Number 15. Humans have been living in what's now modern-day Turkey for a long, long time. In fact, Gobekli Tepe is thought to house the world's oldest temple. How old? Around 11,000 years. That predates Stonehenge by 6k. Number 16. One of the earliest civilizations to rise to power in the region were the Hittites, who appeared in 1700 BCE and grew into an empire that at that point even challenged ancient Egypt. The last king of the Hattite was Sabaluliuma II, and even though he took part in and won the first naval battle in recorded history in 1210 BCE, the Hittite Empire collapsed soon afterwards. Number 14. Anatolia, which makes up the bulk of modern Turkey, then traded hands between a number of powerful empires, with the likes of the Archimedes Persian Empire ruling over the area. That is, until Alexander the Great turned up, and he gave the region more of a Macedonian Hellenistic flavour. Number 18. 
Rome soon came calling and the ascension of Constantine I in 324 AD saw the emperor establish a new Rome. This new capital for the empire was founded as Byzantium six years later. The city would later become known as Constantinople and better known today as Istanbul. Number 19. This eastern part of the Roman Empire would outlast the western bit, you know, the bit that actually contained Rome. The empire in the east would have become known as the Byzantine Empire with Constantinople as its capital city and it would last until 1453. Number 20. In the 11th century, Turkish tribes started to muscle in on Byzantine territory and in 1071 achieved a huge victory at the Battle of Manzikert. Led by the Sultan Alp Arslan, meaning heroic lion in Turkish, the Seljuks captured the Byzantine Emperor Romanus IV and only released him on condition of handing over territory. Number 21. The Muslim Seljuks were seen as such a threat that the First Crusade was launched by Christian kingdoms of Europe to save Byzantium, which also followed the Christian faith. Although the Seljuks didn't manage to defeat Byzantium completely, they had opened up Anatolia to Turkish tribes. Number 22, ooh ooh. But this is Anatolia, and power once again changed hands, as the Seljuks gave way to the Mongols. In this ever-changing political maelstrom, Osman I, born around 1258, founded the Ottoman dynasty, the empire which bore his name, kind of, and would last until 1922. Number 23. Ottoman expansion was swift, relentless, and usually at the expense of the Byzantine Empire. Under Mehmed II, they famously captured Constantinople in 1453, which had been the capital of Byzantium for over a thousand years. Now it became the new capital of one of the most powerful empires on the planet, the Ottoman Empire. Number 24. At its greatest extent, in 1683, it covered around 5.2 million square kilometres of territory, including much of the Balkans, part of Arabia and the North African coast, as well as the Middle East. Number 25. Also in 1683, the Ottoman advance into Europe was finally halted at the Battle of Vienna, where 150,000 Ottoman troops laid siege to the city and had captured its outer fortifications. Number 26. However, after 15 hours of fighting, 80,000 Polish and Holy Roman Empire troops, under the leadership of John III Sobieski of Poland, lifted the siege. Number 27. This defeat was the high watermark for the empire and thereafter it settled into a gradual decline. By the time the 19th century rolled around, the Ottoman Empire was given the nickname the Sick Man of Europe, as it lost territory and declined economically. Number 28. Greece gained independence in 1830 with Romania, Serbia and Bulgaria following in 1878. The Balkan Wars of 1912-13 saw the Ottoman Empire lose almost all of its territory in Europe and 20% of its population. Number 29. Greece gained independence in 1830 with Romania, Serbia, and Bulgaria following in 1878. The Balkan Wars of 1912-13 saw the Ottoman Empire lose almost all of its territory in Europe. Oh, I just said that, didn't I? Political unrest domestically had also seen the rise of the Young Turks, who sought reform of the empire. In 1908, the Young Turks led a rebellion throughout the empire, forcing the authoritarian Sultan Abdul Hamid II to force a constitutional government. Number 30. While the Young Turks sought to industrialise the economy as well as centralise and reform government, when World War I arrived, the Young Turk leaders, perhaps swayed by the early German victories, decided to join the conflict on the side of the Central Powers. Number 31. By the end of World War I, the Ottoman Empire had suffered heavy losses, around 800,000 military personnel had died, and civilian deaths were even higher at over 3 million. Number 32. As the end of 1918 approached, the Ottoman Empire was on the ropes, and the 36th and, spoiler alert, last Sultan, Mehmed VI, decided it was time to sue for peace. The armistice of Madros ended Ottoman involvement, and the Allies soon moved in to occupy Constantinople. Number 33. In terms of that peace, it was agreed in the 1920 Treaty of Sevre, which saw France and Britain take control of large swathes of the territory. Syria, Lebanon, Palestine, Jordan, and Iraq were added to those countries' already huge empires. Number 34. Closer to home, though, the peace agreements placed parts of Anatolia, the traditional heartland of Turkey, under Allied control. Italy was handed a zone of influence in southwestern Anatolia, and Greece took western Anatolia plus Thrace. Meanwhile, an independent Armenia was to be given to parts of eastern Anatolia. Number 35. The occupation of the port city of Izmir, or Smyrna, by Greek forces in May 1919, and their subsequent expansion into Anatolia sparked a bit of resistance amongst those Turkish civilians. Number 36. Nationalist feeling was starting to grow and Mustafa Kemal, otherwise known as Kemal Ataturk, became a leading figure amongst Turkish national movement. Number 37. In 1920, nationalists in Ankara convened a Grand National Assembly, where Mustafa Kemal was elected as its first president. The assembly declared the Sultan's government to be under foreign control and support for the assembly surged once the terms of the Treaty of Sevre became public knowledge. The Ottoman government's authority was absolutely in tatters. Number 38. 
You might not have realised it yet, but we're now well into the war of the Turkish independence, fought between 1919 and 1923. Turkish nationalists working with the Soviet Union soon ended Armenian hopes of independence and secured Eastern Anatolia, while diplomatic deals saw France and Italy bow out of the conflict. Number 39. That left Greece, backed by Britain, plus the Ottomans as the main opponents to the Turkish nationalists. The key showdown took place at the Battle of Sakarya in 1921, which halted the Greek army's advances and put it on the back foot. Number 40. By 1922, Greek troops were expelled from Anatolia and that same year Turkey regained control of eastern Thrace and the Dardanelles. In 1923, the Treaty of Lausanne was signed in Switzerland. It recognised the boundaries of modern Turkey and technically its signing represented the official end of World War I. Number 41. Meanwhile, back in Turkey, changes were coming thick and indeed fast. The Grand National Assembly abolished the Sultanate on the 1st of November 1922, and on the 13th of October 1923, Ankara became the capital, with the Republic of Turkey proclaimed on October the 29th, with Mustafa Kemal as its first president. The Meaning of Life The policies of Mustafa Kemal, now known as Kemalism, sought to reform Turkish society. In 1928, a clause in the New Republic's constitution stating that Islam was the state religion was removed, making Turkey a secular republic. Number 43. Reforms included the adoption of the Latin alphabet and the Gregorian calendar, while women were given the right to vote in national elections in 1934. There was also a ban on a particular hat, but I'll tell you about that a bit later. Number 44. In 1935, surnames were introduced to the country and Mustafa Kemal was given the moniker Ataturk, meaning father of the Turks. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk remained in power until his death in 1938. Number 45. When World War II rolled around, Turkey tried not to get involved, initially agreeing an alliance with the, well, Allies, but then stepped back when Germany swept through Europe in 1940. Number 46. It even signed a non-aggression pact with Germany in 1941 after the Balkans fell, but eventually it did enter the war on the Allied side. They broke off relations with Germany in 1944 and declared war on the 23rd of February 1945, a few months before Germany surrendered. Number 47. Despite Mustafa Kemal Ataturk being a fan of neutrality and its balancing act in World War II, the Cold War was a bit more of a problem for Turkey. The USSR emerged from the conflict as a superpower and it fancied a slice of Turkey. <laughs> Unintended. Number 48. The Soviets were hungry for control over the Turkish Straits as well as large swathes of northeastern and eastern Anatolia. This being the Cold War, Turkey sought US assistance, which it started to receive in 1947, and it joined NATO in 1952. Number 49. The Republic of Turkey had effectively been a one-party state since its inception, ruled by the Republican People's Party, the CHP. But political liberalisation followed the war. In 1946, the first multi-party elections were held, and in 1950, the first fully free elections were held, and the CHP were defeated by the Democratic Party, otherwise known as DP. And not that DP, come on. Number 50. 1960 saw another first when the military staged a coup. You know the Democratic Party I mentioned? Well, after 10 years at the top, they were removed from power, the party abolished, and 600 government officials were put on trial. Number 51. In 1962, former Finance Minister Hassan Polatka and Foreign Minister Vatin Rostov Sorlu were given a death sentence and hanged. 1952. Adnan Mandarez, the DP Prime Minister, who had won three elections, tried to escape the same sentence by committing suicide with sleeping pills, but was revived, only to be hanged two days later. Number 53. This wouldn't be the last time the military would play its part in Turkish politics. In 1971, 1980 and 1997, armed forces intervened to topple governments who were seen to be losing a grip on the country and who were pro-Islamist. Number 54. In 1974, Turkey invaded Cyprus in retaliation for Greece carrying out a coup on the island nation. Turkish forces took control of over 40% of the island. Number 55. In 1983, the Turkish part of the island declared itself independent as the Turkish Republic of Northern Cyprus. Turkey is the only country in the world that recognises it as an independent state. Number 56. Staying on the subject of the military, troops and security forces have often been dispatched to the southeastern parts of the country, known as Turkish Kurdistan. The area is home to Kurdish people, and since 1978, conflict between separatist Kurdish groups and Turkey's government has often turned violent. Number 57. In the 1980s, the Kurdistan Workers' Party, the PKK, had between 5,000 and 10,000 fighters, who attacked government property and officials. By 1993, some 200,000 Turkish forces were present in the Kurdistan region, and an estimated 15,000 people, mostly Kurdish civilians, had died between 1982 and 1995. The conflict still remains unresolved. Number 58. It's fair to say that Turkey has wanted to become a member of the European Union for a while now. It's kind of had associated status since 1963, but it isn't a full member. Number 59. 
It actually applied for full membership in 1987 and that process is still ongoing. In fact, talks of Turkey joining didn't actually start until 2005 and in 2016 just one of the 35 chapters needed to complete the process had been completed. At that rate, Turkey will join the EU in the year 2390. Number 60. There are 82,693 mosques in Turkey, 3,113 of which can be found in Istanbul, which you'll remember is no longer Constantinople thanks to the bands The Four Lads and They Might Be Giants. It might sound like a lot of mosques, but it works out at around 900 Muslim Turks per mosque. Number 61. According to the Turkish Cultural Foundation, the oldest mosque in Turkey is called the Ulu Kami of Diyarbakir, which was founded in part with a church in the 17th century. The mosque as we know it today was built in 1092. Number 62. The Grand Kamlika Mosque is the largest mosque in Turkey. It's a good job it's big because it has a lot in it, including a library and its own art gallery. Number 63. One of the other more famous mosques in Turkey is the Sultan Ahmed Mosque, otherwise known as the Blue Mosque, a 17th century place of worship that has an interior decorated with blue hand-painted tiles, and an outside that has blue lights shone upon it at night. So yeah, Blue Mosque sums it up. Nintendo 64. Opposite the Blue Mosque is the Hagia Sophia, which was the largest Christian church of the Eastern Roman Empire before being converted into a mosque in the 15th century. It was also a museum between 1935 and 2020 when it reopened as a mosque again. Number 65. Its 2020 reopening was something of a controversy as UNESCO, the World Council of Churches and the International Association of Byzantine Studies all opposed the building's redesignation. There's a lot more fallout to the decision with Greece and Cyprus calling for EU sanctions on Turkey for setting the country back six centuries. Uh oh. Number 66. Speaking of UNESCO though, there are 18 places in Turkey that feature on UNESCO's list of World Heritage Sites. One of these is Ephesus, home to the Temple of Artemis which was one of the seven wonders of the ancient world and one of the seven churches of Asia from the Book of Revelation in the New Testament. Number 67. The people of Turkey love tea, so much so it may as well be called Turk Tea. 96% of the population are said to drink a cup a day, and per year each individual person drinks 7 pounds of the stuff, the most in the whole of the planet of Earth. Number 68. In fact, Turkey makes a lot of tea too, according to the World Atlas, they're the 6th highest producer of the stuff in the world, that's higher than Iran and Indonesia. Number 69. Yeah, what a delight. One thing you may think upon hearing the word Turkish is delight, especially if you're me. If you've not heard of it or never read The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, Turkish Delight aka Rahat Ayakum is a sweetie that was made in 1777 Istanbul and is essentially a gel type snack made of starch and sugar. Number 70. It's believed by the way that the all-American jelly bean was actually born out of admiration for Turkish Delight too. The West was inspired by the taste of the delight and formed it into a bean instead. Number 71. Some Turkish sweets were even used for medicinal purposes. Mazir paste, for instance, is over 500 years old and in the Ottoman Empire was first used as medicine. In a move that would make Colonel Sanders blush, it consists of over 40 herbs and spices. Number 72. Mazir paste is so beloved it even has its own festival, Pastonbury. <laughs> no, not really, but seriously, that'd be a good name, right? The Mazir paste festival in Manisa, Turkey celebrates the recovery of Hafsa Sultan through the use of the paste. Number 73. Hafsa Sultan, by the way, was the wife of Selim I, and was the mother of Selim the Magnificent, who ordered the public distribution of the Messiah paste after she used it for therapeutic purposes to get over an illness. Number 74. Something else that's pretty big in Turkey, although not literally, hazelnuts. Turkey is the biggest hazelnut exporter in the world, providing 75% of the EU's hazelnuts at the very least. Number 75. One very big buyer of Turkish hazelnuts is those guys who make Rocher's Kinder Eggs and Nutella, the Ferrero Spa company. In fact, they even bought a hazelnut processing company called the Altan Group. They're based in Turkey, by the way. Number 76. In Turkey, it's a common tradition to eat sweets such as halva for major life events. When a mother gives birth, she receives sweets and their baby is traditionally welcomed with halva at birth. On the other hand, halva is also served at funerals, so, you know, both ends of the life. Number 77. Hey, by the way, turquoise means Turkish stone. It's one of the oldest gemstones in history and came to Europe from Asia via Turkey, so its name actually isn't quite right. In fact, it's not even food, so I'm not even sure why I'm mentioning it in this whole, you know, section of food. But hey, our video, our rules, baby. Number 78. To bring us to a close with food, let's talk about Tavu Gursa, a Turkish pudding which is a mixture of milk, sugar, cinnamon, and, um, chicken breast. Hey, when in Istanbul, I guess I'm alright. Number 79. 
Hey, by the way, you know fezes, those lovely little hats? Well, they're illegal in Turkey. This is the fact I was hinting at earlier, by the way. Mustafa Kemal Ataturk banned it in the 1920s as it was seen to be a symbol of the Ottoman Empire. You probably won't actually be arrested, but hey, I don't take your chances. Number 80. Hey, let's talk a little bit about the city that everybody assumes is the capital, but it isn't. Istanbul. It's the biggest city in Turkey and it's one of a kind in that it's the only city that straddles two different continents in the whole world. That's Asia and Europe, by the way. Both of them. Number 81. Istanbul has also been renamed a bunch of times. Originally it was called Byzantium, a nice Greek sounding name, then it was known as Constantinople, and then in 1930 became Istanbul. Number 82. Ibad Turkey is also home to the second oldest subterranean railway line in the world in the form of the tunnel in Istanbul. It opened all the way back in 1875 and only had two stations, but hey, it's only just younger than the tube, so give it a break. Number 83. If you want to see something grand and pretty bizarre, then welcome to Istanbul's Grand Bazaar. It's over 30,000 square meters and contains over 4,000 shops. Number 84. Istanbul is split into two by a big old strait called the Bosporus. It's 19 miles long and 2.3 miles wide and centuries ago at one point split and caused a huge deluge, which some think could have inspired the tale of Noah and his big old ark. Number 85. The Bosporus now has bridges connecting the two sides, and you may be thinking that was a cracking idea, but someone had an idea for such a bridge hundreds of years before one was built, Leonardo da Vinci. He designed a bridge for the Ottoman Empire that would have been the longest bridge in the world had it been constructed. Number 86. How's this for a confusing sentence? Istanbul contains one of the world's biggest miniature parks. Miniatur can be found on the golden shore of Istanbul and contains 135 models of structures from around Istanbul and Turkey itself. Number 87. One of these is a recreation of the Temple of Artemis, which we only went to mention earlier, didn't we, eh? It's dedicated to the Greek goddess of the hunt, Artemis. Number 88. You can also find an incredible recreation of Espendos, an ancient Greek and Roman city that's actually very well preserved in the south of Turkey. Archaeologists, go visit, go nuts. Number 89. Don't go too nuts with that digging and stuff, though, because its Colosseum-like theatre is still in use today. In fact, the Espendos International Opera and Ballet Festival is held there annually. Number 90. Camels are not in any way native to Turkey, but they can still be found at holiday resorts and wrestling rings. Yes, that's right, special Tulu camels compete in Turkey in Turkey wrestling leagues, where they try to make the other one fall over. Number 91. Hey, by the way, we've not even mentioned the biggest celebrity to come out of Turkey possibly ever, Santa Claus. Well, kind of. Saint Nicholas, the Christian figure who inspired the myth of Santa, sorry, spoiler alert there, was from Turkey. Number 92. Turkey was also the home of the very concept of agriculture itself. Archaeologists found evidence of people living in the area more than 11,000 years ago using early agricultural techniques to chomp on crops, which is the oldest found evidence of such practices. Number 93. By the way, not sure I've mentioned it yet, but the currency in Turkey is the lira. Short, sweet, simple, lovely. Number 94. By the way, tulips grow in Turkey, and while you may associate them with Holland first, that's actually because of Turkey. In the 16th century, the Dutch ambassador returned from Turkey with some tulip bulbs and Holland have loved them ever since. Number 95. But Turkey may well love them even more, as every April, Istanbul has its own tulip festival. Emirgan Park is usually partial to a little tulip or two during the festival, so head there for a sea of colour. Number 96. Apparently, covering a baby in salt is an old part of Turkish folklore that's said to ward off evil spirits. I mean, you'll just end up with a salty baby in my opinion, but hey, I'm not a doctor. Number 97. Putting a tortoise under a baby's pillow at night is an old superstition in Turkey, apparently. Although the majority don't practice it anymore, thank goodness for that, some believe it's to protect the infant. Number 98. The Turkish didn't use surnames until the year 1934. Most Turkish people didn't have surnames until the law required it. Among the more popular surnames are Kaya, Demir, Sahin, and Selik. Number 99. Turkey's average life expectancy has been increasing since 2017. As of 2019 to 2020, the life expectancy for the Turks is 77.54 years, an increase of 0.29% from the year before. Number a Honda Ria Der. Now let's end with a couple of fans about cats and dogs, shall we? Because, you know, why not? Tom Billy was a street cat and resident of Istanbul, who became an internet meme known as Chill Cat thanks to her unique way of taking it easy on the street. When she died in 2016, she was honoured with a statue in the city after 17,000 people signed a petition. Ooh. Number 101. Okay then, should we get one for the table? An estimated 150,000 stray cats and dogs live on the streets of Istanbul, and to help feed them, Turkish company Pugodon came up with vending machines. 
Now, don't get excited, the dogs and cats don't operate it themselves, but instead humans put in recyclable bottles and the machine gives out water and food to the animals. Woof woof hooray. So those were 101 facts about Turkey. Have you ever been? Are you watching from there now? Let me know in the comments down below. Be sure to give this video a like if you haven't done so already, and also subscribe, because, you know, we'd really appreciate you. We truly do. In the meantime, two videos on screen that are really going to wet that whistle of yours. Why not click on one and watch it get doused? See you there. Goodbye.